actually I always wanted to do film and don't know where it came from because it's not in the family at all. I just somehow knew that and uh, it was in the beginning it was more like a dream because there was really not uh, like the environment of film or media around. And, uh, and then when I was uh, studying, um, somehow the idea of documentary emerged. And I think it has to do with uh, the things you're good at. Um, because I think you need different skills for um, fiction and documentary. Well, there are some geniuses who can do both. But I think um, if you want to do documentaries, it's, it helps if you have a good sense of observation and if you um, are, you know, if you if you are good at getting close to people and trying to understand them, and not so much creating worlds out of your own inner self or so. And then I found out that um, looking at the world uh, through the camera, using the camera as a tool to look at the world is something which is really interesting to me. And so I said, okay, let's give it a try. I studied uh, theater, film, uh, television, uh, history and literature, but uh, these were uh, classical studies, no film school. Uh, so there was actually no uh, practical uh, branch or practic practical department around. So, uh, you, you know, you, you watch a lot and you read a lot and you think a lot and, and I always thought it was very helpful, but then I thought, okay, but you also need to do something. And um, looking at films, documentary as well as fictional films helped, of course, a lot, like shaping your field of interest and especially how you, how you deal with certain subjects in a filmic way. But then you need to try and do something, something and uh, you know how it, how it happens. You just you take a camera, you go and you try when you're still a student because you don't have a lot to lose and then you, you, learn, it, you learn it by doing. That's the way I, I, I did it and I thought it was really um, a good way to just go and try out when you, when you don't really have a lot to lose. I know the protagonist of our film, Frank, for many years. We met in the first semesters of, uh, our, of our studies in Cologne, in Germany. He was actually studying medicine, I was studying uh, film and uh, theater and television. But then he somehow, uh, you know, he came to our lectures and because he was also very interested in film. And that's how we met and we became friends and we even did some documentaries together, like 20 years ago or so. But in the end, he decided to become a doctor. Um, and then we were already friends, and uh, then he would became very um, ill. He uh, fell into this depression, and I was also there as a friend. I saw it, and it was very difficult. Of course, it's most difficult for him, but for friends and family, it's also difficult because you're very helpless. You, you can't really do anything, and you so much want to help, but it's, uh, it's very hard. You can't. Um, so I knew how he was doing during the bad and dark times of, of this illness. And, and when he was getting better, off, which took some years actually, then he approached me again with the idea to do this documentary. Um, because when he was ill, he had a lot of time. He, didn't, he wasn't able to work anymore. So he started reading uh, about depression, but also about genetics. And then he found out that um, this um, this illness, depression, might be related to genetics, it might be somewhere in our genes. And he also looked at his family and found out that in, in many generations uh, the illness is present and people had died, had committed suicide. And then he has this uh, young son and he was really afraid that he passed along this illness to his son. And that's why he wanted to get into genetics to find out what what can you know what he really wanted to look into his genes and and see what the genes can tell him about his illness and about himself actually because at the time the genetic testing became very cheap it, it was very expensive like 10 or 20 years ago but nowadays it's really cheap to have a um, genetic analysis that's uh, how the idea came and that's how the film started actually So since this is Frank's uh, story, 
Um, also, a lot of ideas came from him. He had ideas of uh, the scientists he wanted to talk to. He had uh, artists in mind which were important to him um, that he wanted to meet. And then we discussed uh, these ideas, Frank and Miriam and me, and then we talked to the production company to see what's possible because it's also, you, you know, uh, you have to fly around the world to meet all these people and then it was a process of discussion and then we decided uh, what we could do and what makes sense in terms of who we want to talk to and after this was decided the uh, um, filming was, was, wasn't outstanding, it was like whenever you shoot a documentary film. We always try to have the, the technical crew as small as possible because uh, we, we think that the in intimacy of the situations is important and if you have like a team with uh, 10 people with lights and everything it's, it's a bit more difficult. So we had like a classical documentary team with a cameraman, a soundman and us. That's it. And while you were filming we tried actually to, to forget that we, that we know each other so well. Because um, of course being close helps a lot in the filming process but then again you need some, something like a critical distance also and uh, that's the balance we were trying to find during the shooting process like if you want if you want an example so for example when we had an interview with uh, some important scientist then uh, we talked to Frank about the questions we wanted to ask before and then he was doing like the interview with the scientists, we were filming it, and when he was, he didn't have, you know, what to ask anymore. But then, we, and we still had some questions. We told him, okay, you could also ask this and ask that, and then we just continued filming. And in um, other situations where there is no, there was no classical interview, um, we just worked with him like we would with any other regular protagonist. Uh, well, first of all, when he was still deep down in his depressions, we couldn't have done the film. He was already getting better, but he was not like cured or anything. So it was sometimes uh, difficult also during the filming process. And then I, th I think that the, this filming process, which took uh, many years, actually did help a little bit because um, being active always helps. You know, if you're um, if you have this illness, it, it really helps if, you're, if you try to do things, if you try to move, if you try to go out to get into the sunlight, to meet people, to have conversations, to, like, um, to be alive in a way, it, it really helps. Um, and so in this sense, I think the filming process did help a bit for him to get better. But it's very important uh, to add that this is not the cure. You know, if you want, if you're, if you have a serious um, mental illness like that, uh, just going out with a film crew will not cure you. This is really important to say. You need therapeutic treatment, uh, like uh, uh, with a meeting with a psychiatrist, and uh, in some cases you might also need uh, medical treatment, which can really help. And these are the really two important things if you want to get better. And if you, you know, can uh, also do some filmic work or any other work where you engage with people, that also helps. But it's not the uh, basics of getting better. Usually it has to be a couple of projects because it's really difficult to get this film financed. It took us like two years to get the, um, to get the financing for The Dark Gene. And, in the meantime, you still have to live somehow. So usually we have some ideas and some get more concrete and some get lost along the way. And we're, we have actually, since then, um, uh, we're actually now finishing a film for Austrian TV about a very nice old lady called Rosina Wachtmeister. She lives in Rome, she's from Austria uh, originally, and um, she's famous for drawing cats, actually very nice <laughs> cats and she um, she's yeah she's a very remarkable woman and 
that's the film we're working on right now. And apart from that, we have, uh, of course, we're always having uh, ideas, but we're there in development stage right now. I knew about the festival, I've heard about the festival, but I had never been here before, so it was really uh, uh, enthusiastic and it was really uh, nice when, when the invitation came. And uh, so, since I've only arrived yesterday, I haven't seen uh, any films, but I have plans, I have a schedule for today, and, and I want to see uh, at least two films, maybe three. And uh, I haven't been to Sibiu yet, so I also want to you know, have a look around and, uh, and get to know the city. Mm -hmm.